caps is a whole spectrum of disease, which includes the mildest form, FCAS, and then the marker -Well syndrome, and the most severe form, Nomid and Zinka. And until 2000, it was thought that there are three different diseases, but then it was found that the disease causing mutation is a missense mutation of the NLRP3 gene. So the NLRP3 gene is encoding a protein called cryopyrin, and cryopyrin is a part of the inflammasome, and in patients with CAPS, there is an overactivation of the inflammasome, which leads to an excessive secretion of interleukin-1 beta. And as a consequence, patients with CAPS are suffering on daily symptoms like fever, urticarial like rash, chronic conjunctivitis, musculoskeletal symptoms, and a severe fatigue. And if you don't treat these patients, long-term sequela may occur, like hearing loss, visual loss, cognitive uh, delay, CNS damage, and a life-threatening amyloidosis, which can lead to renal failure. The gold standard of treating CAPS patients are IL-1 inhibitors and canakinumab is one of the IL-1 inhibitors. It's a human monoclonal antibody which inhibits IL-1 better. And remarkable is the really long plasma half-life of 21 to 28 days, which means that patients need their injection only every eight weeks. To prevent long-term sequela, it is really important to start early with the treatment, to start with IL-1 blockade, really to control inflammation and to prevent further damage. When canakinumab was approved for CAPS, the authority required a prospective registry to collect safety data. But the Better Confident registry was started in 2009 and it's ongoing until the end of this year. And the primary objective was really to collect all adverse events and the severe adverse events in addition to that. We wanted to focus on infections, but also malignancies, vertigo, which was reported in some of the studies, and hypersensitive reaction to canakinumab. In addition to that, we were interesting to see if the efficacy of canakinumab sustained over time in the CAPS patients. So currently there are 288 patients included. Most of them are adults, but there are 100 children between the age of 4 and 18. In most of the patients, the NLRP3 mutation was found. If we have a look at the adverse events and also the severe adverse events, most commonly reported are infections. If we have a closer look what kind of infection we found, most of them are mild upper respiratory infections. So there were 11 events reported of malignancies, but they were not unusual tumors. Interesting was that we observed a quite high number of reports on vertigo, and some of them were even reported as severe adverse events. Of note was that the patients who received pneumococcal vaccination, there were 21 in the whole registry, 14 of them had local site reaction and some of them even systemic signs and symptoms with fever. The good news is that all of them resolved spontaneously. If we look at the data, we can see that the disease activity, which was measured by the Physical Global Assessment, was really stable over time. There were no signs that there's a loss of function. The safety data of the registry 
are very encouraging and I think it's just really important to know that there's increased risk for infection so that the physicians are aware of this risk and really treat early with antibiotics. And overall the treatment with IL-1 inhibitors specifically with canakinumab is a huge advantage for all the CAPS patients. When we diagnose patients with CAPS, they always ask us the same questions. First of all, is there any treatment? Second, is this treatment safe? And third, is it effective over time? And with this registry, we are really able to answer all these questions and can tell them about the data. What we have learned from the registry is that even, even dose adjustment really was safe, which is important for small children and also for those patients with a more severe phenotype who require really high doses of canakinumab. So the impact on daily life is enormous and if we treat early enough we are able to prevent long-term damage.